This question is sneaky. Um, it looks like a kind of point of intersection, right? We have the number of solutions. And so by instinct, we might say, let's, let's graph this, right? Let's see what this looks like. We'll be able to see the number of solutions. So if we do that, I've got a couple options here. The top one, which I'm going to hit turn on in a second, the top one is just straight up what they gave us, right? 10 times 15x minus 9 equals negative 15 times 6 minus 10x. So if I hit that, nothing happens, right? It's supposed to be purple, right? I can zoom around. I don't see anything, right? Look at that. All the way at the hundreds, nothing. So I don't know what's going on. So does that mean that there are zero solutions? Right? If I don't see anything, maybe. Let's turn that off. Another way to think about it, though, is instead of thinking of this as one equation, we could graph it as two. And we could kind of make it so that it's y equals in both cases, just so that it's nice and simple. And we can see how those two separate equations intersect. So that's what the, the lines two and three are here. So if I turn on line two, it's this black line. You can kind of see it there. OK, great. So we've got something. And if we do the same thing for three, well, it's the same line, right? Look, look, watch again, right? There's the black line. If I turn the red on, it's overlapping it completely. Now that could just be a trick of the scale. So maybe I want to zoom in and really see it. But look, every time I do it, the red is just overlapping the black. Well, what does that mean? We still need to understand that if the two lines are overlapping, then they have an infinite number of solutions because they intersect at every single point. That's maybe hard for some of us to understand because we weren't given two separate lines, right? So why am I allowed to do this? Why am I allowed to take this one equation, turn it into two separate things? What does this even mean, infinitely many solutions? What is a solution? Basically it means that we could take any number and put it in for x and the equation would work. And we could test that and do a whole bunch of numbers and just kind of see it happening. But what I'd rather do is teach this to you the way I would if we didn't have the calculator. Because honestly, I think it's easier to understand if we don't have the calculator. What we do have here is no x squared. So these are basically kind of set up for us as lines. And when I think about lines, I think about y equals mx plus b. And luckily, lines are very, very simple. There's not much that can happen. So if I have a system of two lines on a graph, the most common thing that's going to happen is that we're going to have exactly one solution, right? So if I randomly generated two linear equations, the odds are extremely high that they're going to have exactly one point of intersection. They're just going to cross once, and that's it. It is impossible for them to cross twice. That can only happen when you have something more complicated like a parabola, a quadratic equation, and we don't have that here because there's no exponent, so we're good. But it is possible for there to be infinitely many solutions or zero solutions. Infinitely many is going to happen when the two lines are the exact same. Zero solutions is going to happen when the two lines are parallel, which in terms of our equation means that they have the same slope, but different y intercepts, right? And the b is the y intercept and the m is the slope. So what I would want to do to understand this is just take these equations that I'm given, split them up and pretend that they're two separate lines, and then make them look like y equals mx plus b and see what I have. So let's start with this left-hand side, right? So that's y equals 10 times 15x minus 9. Well, that doesn't look like y equals mx plus b. mx plus b, there's no parentheses there. So let's fix that, right? y is equal to 150x minus 90. So that looks like a y equals mx plus b equation. There is a slope of 150. There is a y-intercept of negative 90. That seems normal. Let's do the same thing for the other side. y equals negative 15 times 6 minus 10x. Again, we're going to distribute. We're going to get y is equal to negative 90 plus 150x. And some of you may already see it, but I would still want to get this into y equals mx plus b, which means rearranging these two components. So that's going to be y is equal to 150x minus 90, which is exactly the same as what we had on the other side. So there's my proof that I have infinitely many same uh, solutions. These are exactly the same line. The m's are the same, the 150 is the slope, the b's are the same, negative 90, 
So we are now have proof that these equations would have infinitely many solutions, meaning they intersect at every single point because they are the same thing. Okay, so when the SAT kind of asks us about the number of solutions, a common situation is if we know that they're kind of linear equations, break them apart. Give yourself two lines because a solution as an intersection point is much easier to kind of comprehend than a solution is just like a number that fits into an equation. So having the y equals mx plus b I think is easier to see what's going on. It's easier to memorize what we need to memorize and it just kind of gets rid of some of the clutter involved in questions like this where there's parentheses and all that stuff. Um, please memorize this. This will come up on pretty much every SAT. They really like this topic. They can ask it in lots of different ways, but basically what I wrote here next to choices A, C, and D is all you need to understand all the different combinations that they could give you.